Today we are going to revise typhoid. Generally enteric fevers are divided into two types, typhoid and paratyphoid. Causative organisms ki baat kare to, typhoid is caused by a gram negative bacillus called Salmonella typhi and paratyphoid is caused by a serotype paratype A, B and C. Now let's see the mode of transmission. It is mainly caused by contaminated food and water with feces from infected patients and carriers. These bacteria can survive in sewage or contaminated water for weeks, but they can't grow and reproduce there because they need a human host to reproduce and continue their life cycle. The next point is pathogenesis. After ingestion, salmonella passes through the gastric acid barrier and attach to the small intestinal mucosa. By penetrating mucosa, bacteria reach to the mesenteric lymph nodes and multiply there. Then bacteria enter the bloodstream by the thoracic duct. Through bloodstream, bacteria spread to the liver, spleen and bone marrow. Later, they re-enter the blood and return to the intestine through infected bile. In the ileum, they cause strong inflammation in pears patches, which can lead to ulcers, bleeding or even perforations. Talking about the incubation period, it is typically about 10 to 14 days, but it can be longer with slow and gradual onset. When it comes to the clinical features, infection starts with fever which is in step ladder fashion, like rises gradually over 4 to 5 days. With fever, other symptoms are also seen, like general weakness and fatigue, increasing headache, pain in limbs and muscles, feeling excessively sleepy or tired, constipation which is common in adults, diarrhea and omitting which is more commonly seen in children and relative bradycardia matlab temperature ke hisab se jitni pulse milni chahiye thi usse kam milti hai by the end of the first week a rose red rash may appear on the upper abdomen and back along with cough and epistaxis around 7 to 10 days the spleen becomes palpable and the constipation is followed by diarrhea and abdominal distension with tenderness if the patient remains untreated by the end of the second week, then the patient could enter into a coma. Now we are going to look at investigations. First is blood culture test, which is done in the first week to detect bacteria. Next is Vidal test, which is done after the first week and detects antibodies to the O and H antigens. We could also perform a stool culture after a week, which identifies salmonella in stool. There is also a test called Typhidot test which detects IgM or IgG antibodies and used for early detection. Next, the management of typhoid fever. The first thing is an antibiotic selection. Antibiotics are decided based on in vitro sensitivity testing to check which antibiotics are effective against the specific bacteria causing the infection. This testing helps in selecting the most effective drug and avoiding resistant issues. Fluoroquinolones are the first line of treatment under this ciprofloxacin 500 mg is given twice daily. Talking about some alternatives, extended spectrum cephalosporins like ceftriaxone and cefotaxime are also prescribed but they have slightly higher treatment failure rates. For fluoroquinolone resistance cases, azithromycin 500 mg once daily is given. Next thing is to treat carriers. For treating them, ciprofloxacin is given for 4 weeks. The last point is complications. In case of untreated or severe infection, some serious complications are seen like intestinal perforation, septic foci, bone and joint infection, meningitis, myocarditis and nephritis. So that's it for this lecture. I will see you in the next video. Until then have a wonderful time.